Hi right, guys, today is uh, part one of Canon. Action. All right, today uh, we got something really special. We got the other elephant in the room, and that's Canon. So Mr. Wu here is going to be talking about Canon. So you Canon users, don't feel neglected. <laughs> I don't want you to feel neglected, now do we? Okay, Mr. Wu, so let's take a look at them Canons. Okay, Canon. I think today Canon is well known all over the world, big company, doing very well. But let's see how they started. Now, in, initially Canon made only the expensive camera, the SLR high-end. And one day they figured, they wondered how would the consumer react if they make a simpler camera, lower price, easy to use, and how will the consumer go after it? So they were doing an experiment. They came up with this camera, a Canon Net. It's a fixed lens, 45 millimeter. It got an interesting rear winding lever. Like almost like the Leica width, but the Leica width is a sliding. This one is a turning. It turns on the axis, but if essentially it does the same thing. You wind with one finger, your the other hand on the shutter, so you can actually do a quick shot. Hey, you do it fast enough, you are as good as a motor winder and mechanical. So they made this camera with auto exposure. Metering is by the selenium light cell, so you don't need battery power. It, 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 it converts light energy into power to, to run the meter needle. And they have a aperture prior, uh, shutter priority. You set to auto, you select the shutter speed, the camera will set the aperture. And if it's uh, too, too dim, your shutter speed is too high, it will lock up. It won't allow you to click. So they are interlinked. Then of course you can do a full manual. You can do your aperture. You can do your shutter speed. So, got self timer, flash sync with a PC cord, no hot shoe. So, they came up with this to find out how the consumer will act. So when they open it up for sale, their eyes were open. In two hours, they sold off one week of stock. Then they realized there's a huge consumer market. Then they quickly came up with middle of the range model, low end model, beside the flagship model. So they were the early ones who come up with consumer camera. It did very well. This came out 1961. The same time, they came up with an advanced changeable lens rangefinder. The time when rangefinder was the day camera to have. So you beside Leica and Zeiss, they make a camera with rangefinder and changeable lens. This one, Canon adopted the Leica screw mount. So you can use a Leica screw mount lens and put it in. The rangefinder coupling is the same. You can put the Russian uh, copies as well. And this lens I have is actually a Russian lens, a Jupiter which is a copy of the German Biogon uh, 35 2.8. So they, they are compatible. So you screw it on. But what they did better than the Leica at that time, there's a view here. You can select the frame from 35 millimeter, 50, 85 and 100 and 135. So you got frame line from 35 mm to 135, all built in. Only thing you had to dial it in, unlike in the Leica M, it, it appears automatically. But that's a small inconvenience, you dial in. So you, you virtually don't need to put a, a additional finder on top. Now this first version, the Leica 7, they also have a light meter that doesn't need battery. And the light meter scale is here, and because of that, you cannot put a you cannot put a flash shoe. So as an accessory, 
you can keep put one here and then it comes over here then you can put a shoe so got a winding lever shutter speed one second to 1000 but what makes it different instead of using cloth which sometimes get burn a whole burn when you point it at the sun but this one is metal shutter oh. metal shutter so that that problem don't don't uh, happen we won't burn holes so that's amazing so you got this later on they improve it they have the 7s then they put a cds cell more sensitive but needs a battery you got a self timer and outside here you find another mount like a bayonet mount external bayonet mount this is for one of the special lens they were the first one to come up with a 50 millimeter 0 0.95 monster of a lens of course you compare today that lens doesn't work as well as the modern 0 0.95 lenses but it was big and huge at that time so you have this canon they, of course they have many other rangefinder versions slightly simpler and so on so they got a whole line of that then as the world was uh, moving away from rangefinder they went to SRR this canon net evolved into a whole series of canon nets so they have this canon net then they have the Canon Net 19, Canon Net 17, then they have the compact version. Canon Net G3, 17, 19, 28. And before that, after that, this camera became the compact autofocus camera. So they were the compact cameras. Now for SRR, this is not the entire range, it's just what I have. Now, again, for consumer one, they have this interesting camera. If you feel it, it's solid as any other camera, well built, but this is the budget one. We call it the EX Auto. So it first came out in 1972. Now, at first, the normal consumer, if they are not a camera person, they find the SRR quite difficult to use. So Canon wanted to simplify everything. So they have uh, auto exposure. You select the speed and camera will select the aperture. But they don't have the full range of speed. It's 500 to 18, which is good enough. Then their viewing system, I can't show you here, very bright. And what they do is they follow what Leica Flex did and what Contarex did. The focusing area, the screen area is an aerial image. That means you cannot use it for focusing. You can use it for viewing, and because of that, it's very bright. So for focusing, only the central circle is a focusing area. So you focus in the center. The rest of it is very bright. So, and also the lens is not a fully changeable lens. This is 50 to 1.8. If I need a wide angle, I just twist out the front part. The front part can be twisted out like some early German cameras. Then you can screw in the other one. So this is a uh, unit for wide angle, 35. So I screw this on. So the rear mechanism, rear lens group remain the same. The focusing mount remain the same. So now it becomes a 35 millimeter, 3.5. If I want portrait, I do the same. I screw this out and I put this. What I have is a 90 millimeter. There's one more, one three, one two five, which I do not have. So this one, we screw it on. Yeah, screw it on. So now you've got portrait, portrait lens. Even the flash is simplified. So it's linked. We put this thing down. It's linked to your focusing distance. So. A simple outfit for those who are beginning to try out the SLR. So, because of this system where you just add the lens to the front, it doesn't cost so much. So, it's uh, not so expensive. So, there's the EX Auto. But for the real proper SLR, the very first one I don't have, but I also have some of the early ones. This one is the FX. 
Now the FX in terms of shape is uh, no different from the later modern one. But what you see here is the little eye here. This is the photo cell, the CDS cell to measure the light. So the metering is uh, not through the lens. They take a reading, you turn it on, you select the range, then the needle will deflect and you see the reading, the aperture reading, and then you transfer it to the lens. It's coupled to the shutter speed. When you change the shutter speed and ISO, the scale will, will respond accordingly. Then when the needle deflect and show you the reading, you transfer it to the aperture. So not through the lens, though at first they have it. And they have this unique lens mount. Uh, Canon call it the bridge mount. So you got a ring, a collar here, you, you turn, and then you pull out the lens. So this lens doesn't turn at all. So when you put it together and you turn, only the locking ring turn, nothing move. What is the advantage? All the linkage, there's no movement, so you get very good registration and no wear and tear. So that's a bridge mount. The first version, the, this lens is a preset diaphragm, automatic, it will close but you can uh, do the preview, you can preview. Yeah, you can preview. Then later on, they improve on it. This is actually the FL mount. They also have a mirror lock-up. And when they design the shutter movement in the mirror, they call it the shockless shutter. So there is a very little vibration to minimize uh, blurring due to mirror or shutter movement. So, and they also selected to use a very short flange distance. Among all the camera, Canon at that time has a very short flange distance. So that was the FX. Then after this came the FTB, FT. I don't have FT. Then I have the FTB. FTB is the equivalent of the Nikomat. So this one has full open metering. The mount is still the same. They call it now FD. From FL, they became FD but the dimensions are the same. So they have all these pins and registration pins and they were made with all this and there's no movement. So no wear and tear, very precise. What happened to the TLB? TLB is a cheaper version of FTB. So this one, multiple purpose self-timer, you, you, uh, you turn this lever, you just uh, like a normal self-timer, 10 seconds. Then, if you push this in, it's a stop-down meter, stop-down, tap of fuel. Then you pull this lever up, Mirror lock. So all combined together. Yeah, just that will feel. When you lock up the mirror, you push it to M. So the mirror lock up. So all combined here. At first, uh, yeah, they have the hot shoe and so on. They have a special accessory. If you want to like to meter in low light, they have another booster here, you put here and you connect to this part and it gives you low reading in very low light. Moonlight, mm -hmm. very low light, you can take meter reading. So you have FTB, came in chrome, came in black. This is a slightly newer version. FTB came out 1971. So maybe after two, three years, they came up with this one. They call it the FTBN. It's, uh, it's an all metal winding lever you got a lever with a plastic tip. And then there is a spring-loaded flash cover. So your flash 
cable doesn't come out by accident. And inside at the lower right corner, you can see the shutter speed. So when you turn the shutter speed, the number will appear. Otherwise, it's the same. And this is a match needle? Match needle. Match needle. So you have the FTV. Okay, let's uh, end this for his part yeah. one, and uh, we'll do part two. Okay? Yep. So we'll be right back and do part two. Thanks.